All right, guys, welcome back to our 9.0.1 tier list for Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. If you've seen the previous videos, we've been over low tier, trash tier, and generally the entire middle tier of the game. And now we get to the interesting stuff. Uh, of course, we have to go through some other characters as well. But before we hit the high tier, we have to go through upper mid. Upper mid is the characters that are just on the cusp of being high tier. But because of where they are, you know, they definitely have some backfalls, but separate themselves from the rest of the middle tier cast because of how scary they are. <clears throat> Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, sub to the channel so I can smile. Thanks, guys. It's up to the channel. I'm running out of ways to tell you to do it. So uh, you got to see my annoying face until you do so. It's your fault. It's your fault. Starting with upper mid, we have Bayonetta. Uh, mark my words about Bayonetta. I really don't think this character is still fully tapped to their potential. Um, if you look on Twitter, social media, people keep posting these like freaking insane Bayo combos and clips showing how easily you can kill, you can like kill people. Um, but I think after all the bad blood that has been in Smash 4, I think people just don't like using her personally. Which means that Bayonetta has now been relegated to a s small but sort of die-hard group of people who are trying to optimize and lab her combos. Uh, there was all these jokes about Bayonetta being trash, being low tier, but I don't think that's the case at all. She has a lot of weaknesses in this game, and that's for sure, but the DNA of Bayo is still there. The way you can utilize her combos in midair to, you know, really drive forward the idea that at any point she can start a combo to change you with a lot of percent there's no character can really do it like bayonetta does um combine that with the fact that you know she does have technically the bullets as a projectile she has really strong smash attacks she has witch time she has which time alone is like who else has witch time no one that alone is like contender for like the best counter in the entire game you can start so many combos off it in your perfect direction. It comes out super, super quick. You can get kills off of it. Um, it's Bayo, so she has a really, you know, good recovery. I see a lot of Bayo players SD. I don't know why that keeps happening, but if you don't SD, like, the character is pretty damn good. Backfalls is that, uh, you know, she has lightweight. She can't always, like, go for a complete, like, zero death like she used to in Smash 4. You kind of have to work a lot harder for it. Um, but I think the character is completely unexplored. And um, I'm calling it. I'm calling it that, like, you know, whether it's by the end of the year or when the, you know, IRL tournaments come back up, Bayo players are going to start having insane runs. Also, an up mid is Bowser. Bowser is, like, the nightmare heavy, right? He's not higher top tier, I would say, but he's definitely up mid because he's fucking strong. So strong. And they gave him a super good command grab i mean koopa claw side b comes out so quickly and as long as you just like find it properly it can lead to kill confirms at like shockingly early percents if there are platforms around like it's such a huge tool if you don't believe me just go watch like leon's games and see what he does with koopa claw the amount of times he finds it it's incredible i think this character i think bowser actually like could be hyped. The only thing holding him back from high tier isn't like himself, it's just his matchups, right? It's the characters that oppress him. It's the characters that can pressure him and bully him and take advantage of his size like no other character can. That's what kind of holds him back. And, and like in a slightly more limited cast, like this would be a high tier character. But upper mid, like yeah, Bowser can win a national. Of course he can win a national. You think Leon can't win a national? Like, and I'm happy players like Leon exist because like, you really can't ignore his performances. You can't ignore everything he's been able to do both IRL and recently, of course, in the era of Wi-Fi or in the era of online tournaments. Um, he's a he's like a burst. He has burst options. He has up B out of shield. He has a stupidly strong back air, stupidly strong um, up air. He has a neutral B that if you time it right, it's little risk and you can do like up to like 30 five percent i think if i check correctly uh fire just by aiming the fire upwards and he already kills pretty early he lives for like quite literally the longest time in the game so you have to have a really good heavy hit or gimp on him in order to kill him but you know with his recovery of course you can use that up b and sort of be sneaky with it to get back um his shield is giant uh he can down b snap to ledge 
He's got a really strong forward air. Running forward tilt is a ridiculously good option. Down tilt for two frames. Um, up smash out of shield. Armor on his moves. I mean, it's Bowser, right? It's arguably the best uh, iteration of Bowser that has existed in Smash Bros. So, yeah. He's scary as hell. And it's really interesting to see now all the stuff you can do with him. Um, but until he figures out a way to deal with those like really oppressive characters in the top tiers, he's going to be stuck in upper mid tier. But it would be really cool if a new meta was discovered, a new tactic was discovered with Bowser, which allowed him to progress to high tier. Also, did I mention his up tilt is really damn good. And, uh, by the way, Koopa Claw. Yeah, Koopa Claw. Also in upper mid, we have Corrin. Uh, the one thing to note with Corrin is that Corrin has a pretty good kill power for a semi-quick package. So, packs a strong punch, especially when there's tippers. Um, you can still surprise the meta at any moment right now if people have a lack of matchup knowledge arrows are strong backer can kill kind of early uh neutral b is really really strong it's all around a solid character up b could be a little recovery could be a little better i feel um and i think like out of shield options could be slightly better but if you use core inside b you can get really early kills um and if you are able to read where your opponent's going you can use her huge range to take advantage of that so all around is a solid character um the samuses so samus and dark samus uh, a lot of people are saying Samus could easily be high tier right now, but I think a lot of people are really only remembering what playing online is right now. Uh, Samus player obviously comes to mind when I think of someone who's like really pushing this character the full distance. Uh, you have Quick in Europe, but you have, you have Joker from Mexico, and Joker's been showing up a lot more in recent Wi-Fi tournaments and showing how scary Samus is. Samus has insane disjoints. Samus has uh, pretty good projectiles, really good grapple. Uh, some of the best aerials in the game. I mean, upper to upper to upper chains are realistic. Forward air reaches at a very long distance. Back air just kills. Back air is just a disgustingly strong kill move. Um, Nair is a great continuation move. Sometimes a kill move as well. Uh, downer spikes off the ledge. You can use bombs to delay your recovery. You can tether the ledge. You can up B pretty well too. Good out of shield options. Um, good forward smash. Good down smash. Uh, decent up smash. All of her moves are pretty good. Her frame data is pretty good. Um, Struggles a little bit with speed, obviously. It was, her moves have, you know, not too great of cooldown. Also, when you get Samus into a combo, the fact that she's heavy but also floaty means you can kind of combo her pretty, pretty often. Um, you can also kill her off the top slightly earlier than expected. Um, but in this game, I mean, you know, yes, they do benefit from lag on Wi-Fi, but they are really just solid overall characters. They're strong. They pack a hefty punch. And the sneakier Samus is with more advanced tactics with how they use, you know, sort of uh, how they use their movement, how they use B reversing uh, makes it really hard to deal with. But once you catch her coming down, it kind of hurts a lot. But yeah, I'm really excited to see what all the Samus has been doing. Um, I think up mid right now is a good place to put Samus. But uh, if the Samus can perform as well in person, easily I do. Another angel that has fall from, fallen from grace, uh, Diddy Kong. Uh, Diddy Kong actually could probably be high tier if they didn't patch out the infinite, but they got rid of the infinite. And I don't think the infinite was like that game breaking either. If it reminded me of like one of those characters that like definitely needed the infinite, they needed it. Otherwise, like they had to work. But when you look at the character, um, it's he's still hella solid, right? We're never gonna get Smash for Diddy Kong back ever again. That's that's not, and, I'm, and we should be happy. We should all be happy that that demon. That bastard is never coming back. But he's still solid in this game. Got incredible aerials. Got really good setups with bananas. Uh, recovery isn't too bad. It goes pretty far. Monkey flip is really, really good. You can use peanut gun as a pressure tool from a distance. Um, grab combos. So many bread and butter tools. Monkey flip is just a great mix-up in general. Down tilt. Uh, to, you know, down tilt to like... Um, to lead to other combos. Down to the grab. Down to the up smash can still work. Up smash out of shield is still just a really, really powerful tool can dance around on platforms really you know fast on the ground he's nimble he's small hard to hit a bit lightweight so he can die kind of early but at, you know at the cost of being a pretty good character um so if people figure out other ways to make pseudo infinites and make the bananas confirm into more stuff he could definitely be a high tier character but for now upper mid in upper mid i also have the pits might come as a surprise to people, but uh, even though they were buffed previously, I feel like we still don't know enough about them and how the buffs went. Um, when you make lists like this, given the current situation of the world, this happens a lot. But you have to look at everything that, 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 that you know they, they did get in terms of the buffs. 
Um, but one thing to know is that everything we tend to see when we actually find a pit main seems very promising. The frame data got a lot better. Um, a good pit that's patient and doesn't, you know, rush in wrong when they should can kill pretty early. Really good, strong forward smash. Arrows can be annoying. Recovery is great. Um, kind of quick on the ground. You can use sort of ladder combos with nares to get around a lot of things. Backer is strong. You can use that side B also with dark pit or pit to kill pretty early and kind of tank through things. It's a character you kind of have to be careful with. I wouldn't say glass cannon is the best way to describe them, but it's like it's it's, it's pit and dark pit, right? You, we've we, we've been familiar with these characters for a while. And in Ultimate, they offered a pretty good, pretty balanced version of the character. The quickness of the character and sort of like the out of shield options, I think, was going to make or break it. Um, like a good up smash out of shield rate, a good, you know, sort of way to mix that up around platforms, a good way to find out when a character wishes to use your side B. Good, good reads in general make the character go a very, very far way. And again, just having generally one of the best uh, forward smashes, I feel, one of the quickest you know, smash attacks, it's always a plus, always a positive. Having a good recovery, always a positive. Um, and I think because Pit has multiple jumps, you can also get around zoners, you can get around people who spam projectiles. You have a good matchup spread because you have enough tools to deal with them. But, you know, they're, they're still held back by not being as strong as one might consider. They're still held back by the fact that um, when they do with, you can combo the everlasting hell out of them. You can edge guard them pretty easily. Even though they keep recovering over and over and over, you can still hit them over and over and over again. So um, a speed buff for them would be pretty interesting. But yeah, pits I put up mid. And now we have the character that nearly uh, ended the entire, or I would say not ended, but changed the entire rule set of ultimate. Uh, we have Hero. When Hero first came out, some people were arguing this character not even, is not only potentially beyond tiers, but shouldn't even belong in the game. They were putting him top tier. They're saying RNG ruins the game. They were saying this and that. If you want a character that changes the tier list based on RNG, go for a hero. You are rolling a dice every single time you play him. Your spell book has its own RNG built into it. If you use a move, obviously it whittles it down and makes it less likely to appear next time or not likely to appear at all, which could limit options. But there's also Hocus Pocus in the list, which is just a complete clusterfuck of whatever could happen. You could use Hocus Pocus and win a tournament for no reason at all. You could use Hocus Pocus and lose a round one. Like that, that's, that's literally it. But most of the Hocus Pocus options are really bad. Anyway, if you are a gambling man and you love playing bingo, if you love to spin to win, if you love just like winning because you pressed the right button at the right time and no reason altogether, uh, play hero. Um, apart from all this, they also give him random crits in general. Um, hero has slow aerials. Um, recovery is kind of obvious, but then again, even though you can give the recovery, hero still has zoom. And with proper spellbook cancels, you have eight little chances to get zoom to show up in the menu. And when you get zoom, zoom is like in some ways the perfect recovery it doesn't matter where you are it doesn't matter how far your distance you will be recovered back to stage and you can jump out of it i will say though with hero some having some really stupid op moves also charging neutral b and killing it super super early uh fully charged side b killing super early having those stupid op moves and decent specials you know not name command do keep this character on the upper edge of things you know um I wouldn't consider Hero a high character though. I think this far in the meta, now the character's been out well over, I think it's been over a year. Maybe I'm kind of things wrong. He's been out for a while. And I think every main of every character, now that the anger of RNG has died down, we sort of understand how to get around it. Like when he has a distance in Spellbook, keep your distance. He's gonna whiff, he's gonna do something. Approach him from a diagonal top usually. Use your own projectiles against him. Gimp his recoveries. He has weaknesses. He has weaknesses. Nintendo could have made him like, Nintendo, if they weren't careful, could have made him the, the new Meta Knight. Like, the new Bayonetta. The new Smash 4 Bayo is actually a way, better way to put it. Because if they weren't careful, he would have gone crazy with power. And there was nothing you can do about it. But luckily, yeah, I wouldn't say he's a balanced character. I think the crits are still pretty stupid. But, like, luckily, he has enough weaknesses to keep him just out of high tier, I feel. But on a good day, he's high tier. On a good day, he's top tier. On a bad day, he's low tier. And now we have Lucas. Look, I'm gonna, all I'm going to say about Lucas is this. If Nintendo wouldn't buff Ness again, then people would actually care more about Lucas and figure out how good this character actually is. Lucas is actually pretty good. 
he's actually pretty good. I mean, if you can get over the sound of the word PK fire being drilled into your ear like a murder hornet, like a murder hornet rather, uh, if you can deal with that, uh, then you can probably play as Lucas. And you'll notice he has a lot of things going for him. Um, he's got a way longer up B recovery. That's you have to kind of respect from a distance. And he has also grapple, which you can go to the ledge, which goes like a lot further than you think. Still has a good air dodge. Still has a um, pretty good frame data. Uh, he's got a really good nair. He's got projectile games that are crazy. PK fire is just a, not only a neutral tool. It can be a kill move at certain times. He has an up throw kill throw. And I believe a back throw kill throw too. He's got a really oppressive pressuring down smash. He's got an up smash. It's one of the strongest in the games. That comes out kind of delayed. Which mixes you up too. If you're not careful. Um, he's got a forwarder that can kill. He's got a downer that can spike. He's got a backer that can spike. Um, he's like just... A slightly worse Ness in a lot of ways when you think about it. Um, like, I don't know. People people just forget about him. They forget about Lucas a lot. If they buff him again, watch out for him. It, it's going to be scary, I think. Um, but his combo is definitely there. And I think the players who do play Lucas, um, they really dedicate themselves to the characters. And then there was some Wi-Fi warriors in the past. I think Lucas was one. Who just make this character look like a task look like just zooming around the stage doing things you couldn't even imagine not to mention he has the psi magnet uh, his down b which can lead into some really interesting properties and combo continuers there's a lot of stuff and i think actually there's even more of this character that hasn't been explored yet and with one little buff it could it could tip the scale so keep your eye on lucas he's an upper mid character he's not bad by any means and yeah i do think lucas going to tournament uh luigi You've probably, uh, you've probably seen a lot of controversy from Luigi from the Wi-Fi Ultimate community, and for an obvious reasons, uh, for a character with the most fucking bonkers grab combo game you've ever seen, you'd think he'd be higher. And I'll, st I'll, I'll, I'll stand by this again. He's the only character, I'm fairly certain, that can just zero death any character. Bar none if you're per if you're like really perfect. Again, I'm not in the Luigi Discord, so please call out if I'm wrong. But at this point, I've watched enough Wi-Fi tournaments to know that this character. I've seen Luigi zero to death at least 50 different characters. So I, I could be wrong, but it's the scariest grab in the game. To me, this is like the equivalent of Ice Climber's Wobble from Melee, but in Ultimate. Just do not, do not get grabbed by this character, ever. Why isn't he high tier? because he's actually pretty easy to box out and not to mention edge guard off the stage luigi is basically praying for a misfire he's going to use his fully charged side b to get as far as possible and as low as possible because his jump into up b gives him a ridiculous vertical boost but if you catch him if you get in the way of that green missile and pray to god you don't get misfired one in eight chance if you stop him there he ha he's forced to air dodge, he's forced to jump to use his options. And then that's like when you can like kill him. I mean, at like zero. You can kill him at like any percent if you just get a good edge guard read. So that is a huge, uh, huge weakness of his. But honest to God, thank the Lord it's there. Because without that, he'd, just be, he'd, he'd run amok. He'd run amok. There'd be six Luigi's in top eight. Thank God his recovery has weaknesses. Thank the Lord. That's seven out of eight times he's a real character in this game. If you can misfire every time, I would uninstall ultimate and play a game with uh, with more balance. Because it wouldn't be a fun game anymore. Uh, Sheik. Sheik to round out upper mid. We have Sheik. Um, Sheik still has insanely stupid frame data. Like, ridiculously good frame data. And you've seen now what Sheik can do with the proper combo drag downs. The character is almost back to its prime form. Like, Smash 4 Sheik was, like, in a league of her own, I guess if you don't include Melee. Smash 4 Sheik was phenomenal as a character. Um, but as the onus goes, Sheik, you know, to balance her out, she still has uh, trouble killing. She still has trouble killing and can still do a lot of damage against some top tiers. Basically, she also struggles pretty hard against top tiers. Across the board, though, matchup-wise, it really isn't a bad pick. You can use needles from a distance. You can use bouncing fish both to recover, but also to get early kills. You can just grab and do up throw drag downs to devastating uh, percents, and then you can find a kill using a poof or a drag down up smash or drag down down smash. You can use a good back air. You can use bouncing fish. Like I said, if you need to confirm a kill, um, you can just get around a lot of stuff. Remember, she's faster than almost any character in the game. 
Her speed is ridiculous and her frame data is ridiculous if I haven't said that enough. Yeah, forward air is really, really weak, but you can do like seven of those pretty easily, right? So take advantage of her frame data, use the hit and run style. This is another character that I'm uh, probably probably in the in the upper mid tier. I would say that um, of in terms of uncertainty, I would say that I, I would say that Sheik is my most uncertain because she could might be high tier. Sheik might be high tier. Um, and so could Samus. So, we'll have to see.